now. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Upbeat Podcast. I am your host, Blake Reynolds. This I am now doing video and audio podcast, which is super exciting. If you're listening to this audio, you can watch the video. Go to my website, blakereynoldsmusic.com forward slash podcast. And whoever you're wanting to watch the video of, just click on their image. Um, but I'm so excited to do this. It'll take you to the YouTube video. I got a very special guest today. But before we do that, got to go do a few house cleaning things. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast. If you're not subscribed already, uh, share the podcast with somebody. If this podcast has encouraged or blessed you in any way share it on social media or, or with a friend and let them know how this encouraged you and lastly be sure to follow me on social media instagram and facebook at blake reynolds music i'm mostly on instagram the facebook thing is kind of okay for me but instagram is my deal but make sure you connect with me there but guys i have a very special guest today it's a, a friend of mine kylie boggs uh she's an incredible worship leader incredible minister for god um and so i'm so excited to have her kylie thank you for being my guest today yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited too. Kylie, why don't you take a minute and just talk about yourself, what you're doing right now in life, and um, just kind of introduce yourself. Yeah, so um, I actually am located in Green, a little south of Greenville, South Carolina, um, at a church called Beach Springs. Uh, I actually grew up there. It's my home church. Home church. My parents are actually the pastors, um, but I recently joined staff there, and I I manage all of the production and media side of things. So just kind of organizing and or orchestrating service planning and stuff like that. So yeah, I got a lot of different things going on. I'm also a full-time student in school still. Uh, I'm past college age, but I decided to go back at a later age. So here I am again, <laughs> doing school again. What are you doing in school right now? So I'm studying ministerial leadership through Kingsgate oh, wow. College. It's actually, um, we're partner site with... Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida. Um, so the Gate Church, I don't know if you know Bishop Tony Miller, his church there, he's previously, you know, he's recently passed. So, uh, but their church still has the King's Gate College that they run through there. So that's where I'm schooling at right now, just online. Ministerial leadership, that is really awesome. Uh, leadership, yeah. I think, is like one of the most important things like anybody should learn in ministry, whether you're young or old. i um, very passionate mm -hmm. about leadership myself, so that's really awesome. Are you familiar with John yeah. Maxwell at all? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Heard his name yeah. a few awesome. times growing up. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I should say I feel like your dad, and I don't know your 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 dad all that well, but I feel like he probably listens to John Maxwell and people like that quite often. Um, yeah, but no, Kylie, thank you for introducing yourself. I'm gonna go through uh, a couple of questions for those of you who are re-listeners. Um, this is old hat. For those of you who are new listeners, this is how it's gonna work. I'm gonna ask Kylie some fun questions, some kind of get to know you questions, and then just <laughs> like Nacho Libre always says, we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty. So, Kylie, here we go. Um, what fictional fictional character are you most like? And fictional could be from a movie but which fictional character are you most like oh my gosh I've been asked this question before and I'm literally the worst at answering it um let's see fictional character <laughs> this is really bad um I'm gonna go with I'm literally blanking like um, you're okay you're fine I'll give you mine and hopefully that'll give you a second to think about give it mine me yours. Would be Andy Dwyer ahead. from Parks and Rec or uh, Shia I, LaBeouf from Even Stevens, just very off the cuff. Doing yeah, even yeah, yeah, I used to love Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> Did oh you ever watch gosh. that? Oh my gosh. Yes, I watched that. My, my, I, I have a little in, sister. Yes, I'm blaming her on that. Yeah, so I was in that whole stage, like Lizzie McGuire, then it went back to Raven, and then it was Hannah Montana and Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Like, that was my Disney age right there. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, all right. So we'll switch it. If you could be any of your favorite Disney characters from those shows, who would it be? Like if you could be any of them. Okay. At the time, that age, I probably would have said Hannah Montana. I but after we, after we've seen years go by, I don't know how she'll say the same, <laughs> but at my young age, that's what I would have, that's what I would have given you an answer to. Hannah Montana. <laughs> Good choice. Good choice. Hannah yeah. Montana. Um, who would you want to play you? And this might be a tough one too, but just go for it anyways. Who would you want to play you in a movie about your life? So like what actor would you want to play you? Okay, this is probably a bad example too, but she's like one of my favorites. And I don't know if this is like a good thing. So like, I love Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> okay. All I right. love her. I think she's hilarious. And in the, the movie she's in with Adam Sandler. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No, yeah, uh, she's yeah. actually a good choice though. 
I, I could see that working. Um, what is your favorite Bible story and what does that Bible story mean to you? And it's okay to go deep so, if you have to. It's totally cool. I was about to say, I don't know if I can like just answer this simplified right now. We might get into it a little bit later, but I'm really on a That's okay. Um, their story and um, just the relationship that they had and all that's right now where I'm at it's been huge in my life um and another one that uh has kind of been there since I was about 14 years old a story that I um cherish and kind of like go back and study on a regular basis oh no can you hear me yeah I can hear you okay sorry I had an incoming something um is Deborah the story of Deborah so just her leadership and who she was and um the way people came to what her, did, like, her for... how is it how does it impacted you the story Deborah told me a little bit about that yeah so I think just the leadership role that she played um as a woman uh I've kind of connected with at a young age I was uh given a prophecy um about Deborah and um just who she was and you know she was a judge and people came to her for advice and for wisdom and when I was wow. a senior in high school um well I received the prophecy when I was in a freshman in high school and then when I was a senior you know you're trying to figure out like you're 18 and they're like you got to figure out what you're doing for the rest of your life <laughs> and the only thing that God had confirmed to me was that that prophecy of being like Deborah um so I just prayed you know God I, that's the only thing that I know so if you can give me those specific words to lead me into this next season then that's what I'll do just give me those specific words and let me know and I was actually in a hair salon (laughs) it's kind of like a little glimpse into my life um and the lady that was cutting my hair I sat down in her chair and she spoke the exact exact words that I prayed for like she wasn't talking about Jesus or nothing and then all of a sudden it was like she just spit those out and I was like whoa okay so that you know it's God when your hairstylist starts prophesying right (laughs) right right it's just I just like came God for a haircut I didn't mean you get my business like <laughs> yeah yeah and it was it was crazy I like my mouth literally was like he just did that like he really just did that so I um ended up going to cosmetology school for a while and I'm I'm still a licensed cosmetology worked that on part-time but just kind of like a little stepping stone a season you know so didn't mean to get yeah, into that's all awesome. of that and- no, no, no. Actually, that's totally fine. Uh, the, our podcast, and, and I love to make sure my podcast is authentic and real. And, you know, I just had uh, Ryan and Victoria Cole. I think you know them. They were just on my podcast last night. And yeah. uh, they're Steve, with Steve Ward and um, their kid comes walking in. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. It's like, it's not a big deal. You know, it happens as a part <laughs> of life. But um, I love that you broke off and talked a little bit about what this actually story means to you and Deborah. And I love what you said um, about how, of course, we're, we're, we're not 18 anymore, but this podcast, I know I've got a lot of millennials, even people older than that listening. Everybody tells us at 18, you got to have your life figured out. And it's so much pressure to put on a young person. It's like, you're not going to figure it out. But what they don't tell you is that you're going to figure it out for the rest of your life. They said right. vision is something that you may it's a relationship and that is something I wish that was taught to younger people myself included yeah. that I'm still learning we're so indoctrinated that if you don't have that one vision at 18 years old you're you're just gonna right. go through life not it's like how that works like God yeah. my God can give you a peak a glimpse of that vision and you'll spend the rest of your whole life just God knows what it is we and we know that but we're right. modifying we're learning that vision and you know I've been in this recent season and I, I know you're kind of the same way um, but God just asks you to adapt, you know, being pliable yeah. and yielding to him. And honestly, we'll probably get into that a little bit later, but just having, yeah. just teaching young people that, Hey, just believe God for a word. Like you had said, God, just give me direction. And that's kind of what you're saying is God, just give me a direction to go. Um, right. and I think and that's so important for our generation is just ask God for direction. Yeah. I, I just think, I know, like for myself, um, I don't, it's just our society in general. There's, like you said, there's so much pressure in figuring it out. Figuring it out, you gotta know. And you know, if you don't get a four-year degree, then you're not doing the right thing. You know, all those different <clears throat> pressures. And I remember I read something. I was probably 20 at this age, or at this time. Um, but I read something, and it was like when you, when you're in high school and you're 18 years old, one day they ask you, they make you ask for permission to go to the restroom, and the next day they want you to decide what you're doing for the rest of your life and I was like that's literally the truest statement I've ever seen in my life (laughs) but it's so much pressure they put on them so anytime I talk to um, teenagers and those who are getting ready to 
no, you know, take that next step. I'm like, look, it's okay. You don't have to have it all figured out. I'm I'm 26 and I still don't have it figured out. I know people who are 46 and they're still, you know, God is moving them and working with them and developing them. And I don't think that process ever stops. Um, I know I'm still really Amen. young, but I don't think the process of becoming formed into the person you're supposed to be ever stops. So, yeah. Amen. <laughs> and, I, and I think that goes back to what you're saying, what you're like, we're so worried about the destination that we don't mm-hmm. even get moving. And it's just one of those things like just ask God for direction and he'll take care of the destination. Um, and so I absolutely love what you said there. So let's, let's, I'll keep asking you some questions. I, I like where we're going with this though. So I'll ask a few easy ones. And we'll get back to some deep ones. Are you a coffee okay. or tea? Person? Coffee. Coffee all the way. Do you drink, do you drink it black or is it creamer with coffee? Oh, it's like more creamer with coffee. I've actually tried to do better here recently. Um, I don't put as much and I've started using sugar free. So I'm trying to like back down a little bit to the, just the coffee side of it, but I do love the cream. <laughs> uh, I, I like tapping it every once in a while. I drink mine black, but every once in a while I was just like, I want to pour some creamer in there. And I don't, um, I don't go sparingly when I was like, cause I, I do it every once in a while. So I was like, I'm just going to dump some in there and we'll figure <laughs> it out later. <laughs> yeah. Don't put in there. That looked like five <laughs> tablespoons to me. Um, what is your favorite emoji to use? um let's look (laughs) (laughs) I think like honestly I send the laughing face all the time yeah it's my number one use the the little like with the crying laughing face or whatever yeah yeah I started using the one that's sideways recently yeah yeah I've seen people use that one and I don't know if I don't use it just because it's like not in my recent or I don't know what it is but I that's the laughing one I use on a regular basis. <laughs> uh, but that says that says a lot about your um, your personality, though, as a person, like with the type of emojis yeah. that you use. Um, and so let's ask a few more questions here. Um, what is something you're passionate about? Um, are we going to go deep on this one again, or you want me to do that? Yeah, like feel free to. Go, go in on it. I'm <clears throat> passionate about people. I love people. Um, and I want what I'm passionate about is seeing them experience God and the fullness that he has for them. I know that sounds like a really Christianese kind of answer, um, but that's what I, I love. I love helping people develop, seeing people um, walk through. I like, I like to see people walk through different stages of life and things like that. So, and just I love that. Thought, so. And that, that ties into your really ties into your degree, ministerial leadership, because leadership mm-hmm. is really empowering others to live their best life. And yeah, um, seeing yeah. people experience God, that is like, that is truly the best thing. And, and I, I was listening to um, some leadership podcasts, and I know you'll love this. And they just talk about our job as leaders and even as Christians is to empower others to be fulfilled mm-hmm. and to live their best life. And sometimes that means laying down our lives but sometimes that means laying down what we want and just to see others because that's what it's all about god calls us to be like him and so sometimes that means uh people when i say lay down your dreams hear hear me out when i say this uh because your dreams are going to happen through god we know that amen so but sometimes there are times where you have to put your dream on hold so you can help somebody else and be a blessing but god through that can see your can have your dream fulfilled and come to pass so um i was just going a little bit deeper on what you said but i love that seeing people experience god is truly the greatest yeah. miracle and greatest blessing in our lives right right i love it i love it <laughs> uh, that is that is awesome all right so one more funny question um okay. and then let's get down into your testimony and i want you to share a devotional or you can do either or um all right so you've been kidnapped kidnapped but get returned after two hours because you you could not stop talking about what uh, how they were going to wish they would have returned me sooner. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a pretty um, forward person. So I don't really hold back much that I would probably just like be laying into it. Like, listen here, you're doing the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, so they're probably or you're like, like psychoanalyzing their, their outfits. Blue is not your color, baby. I'm sorry. Yeah. That. It's just not yeah. working for you. That ski mask. I don't know what you were thinking this morning. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. saw that question. I thought it was hilarious. I'm like, if somebody were return me, what would they return me? <laughs> yeah, that would probably be like, please I was like, take her. <laughs> I asked that question specifically. I was like, I'm going to ask Kylie this. I want to see what she says. So I like that up, up front. Honestly, 
Um, and, and I love that you're kind of telling us a little bit more about your personality there. You're very upfront and direct. I appreciate those people. Um, and though that personality has its pros and its cons, I would rather have somebody be very direct with me than very passive and not honest. I do not like that at all. Yeah. Like, if you got a problem, you just tell me. And even right. if it's going to come across rude, you need to tell me and be honest with me. Um, yeah. So I love delivery that. Delivery is appreciate- everything. Delivery is everything on how you deliver it. And that's something like I work on every single day. <laughs> but I do believe <laughs> that the best way to be is let's just let's be honest with one another we'll help each other you know that kind of thing so yeah (laughs) even the bible talks about your delivery about how uh, about a a word being spoken correctly a word in due season and that's also talking about timing there but let's talk about that for a second what do you do to make sure um and not just about your personality i think this can apply to anybody because there are people who are the Mm -hmm. opposite of your personality who are too nice and their deliveries Mm -hmm. their their delivery can be misconstrued and muddy the water how do you work on that delivery making sure your point gets across but you're still showing the love of God. So I'm slow to speak. <laughs> I, you, you know, I, um, as a child, I was the one, I, I'm one of four children um, and I'm the third in line. So I'm right there in the middle. Um, but I was the kid that I would say something and my mom would be like, you don't, you don't say that. Like, it's not okay to say that <laughs> because I would just respond quickly. You know, like whatever came here was coming out there. And so um, I got to learn, especially dealing with different types of personalities and things like that. Like not everybody is like me and I'm not like everybody else. So we ha- it depends on the person that I'm dealing with. And um, I just really, I, I know that sounds simple, but I, I just think, okay, wait a minute. Let me, let me think through the best way to say this, considering the person that I'm talking with. Um, I don't know if does wow. that make sense. Yes, that makes perfect sense. And honestly, like I said, we're it, my podcast. We're just gonna. Uh, I'm free, I'm sure you're familiar with this term, but follow the river. Um, I want to follow right. the river on that. How do you, when working in ministry and and even in life? I mean, the world is filled with so many different peoples, cultures, ethnicities, mm-hmm. uh, backgrounds, colors, everything. How do you? Uh, what is the best way for you? And this might be going back to your original answer, but what's the best way for you as a leader uh, and as a Christian to handle those different personality types? Yeah, so um, I think that's something I've learned, too, uh, as I've matured and gotten older, uh, being able to recognize how people respond. And um, I'm not the best at it. Like, I still don't get it right all the time. I'm still learning and things like that. But um, honestly, I think I have to depend and be confident that the Holy Spirit is working in and through me, right? Um, Like in decision making and how to deal with people and things like that I have to be confident in knowing that like Lord when I'm going into this conversation Lord give me the words to say um help me be compassionate help me be gentle with my words just help me be direct with my words I think a lot of the time our generation especially um if we don't agree with you then we think then people think you're against them and that's not true um that's really good like just because I'm kind of bringing correction or um challenging you on what you're saying that doesn't mean that I'm against you or that I don't love you or that I don't support you it just means let's have this conversation let's talk this out and you know like I can be on the other side of the table sometimes like somebody questioning me and I find myself even you know in that defense mode and like wait a minute like don't ask me those questions so it's it's all the I'm not like I said I don't have it perfect it's all it's all around but uh, when I go into conversations like that I do I have to pray Lord let me be compassionate. Um, help, give me, you need to give me the words to say because I'm not always going to have the words to say. So that's kind of how I go into those. Amen. I absolutely love that. No, no, no. I, I wrote your prayer down. And just so you know, um, and I, when I, I'm over here on my phone, I'm taking notes and that's where my questions are at. I promise oh, you're I'm good. not texting or playing some kind of weird video mm-hmm. game, but um, <laughs> you're totally that's what I, like. I'm, I'm in church service. So take, take a quick pause here. I will be in church service sometimes. Um, and I will be over there just on my phone like this. And I look like I'm texting, yeah. like I'm mad texting somebody. And I have people had people look at me like, dare you be on your what phone are you looking doing? at here? And I'm like, I'm reading my Bible and I'm taking notes. Isn't that what I'm supposed to be doing? But <laughs> yeah. a lot of people, miss, miss yeah. me. I'm like, this is where, I, if you look at my phone after the end of the message, sometimes I will have pages of notes just going You can down look. There. Yeah, you can look. See, like, I don't care. There's nothing to hide here. But back to what you're saying about, Lord, help me to be gentle, compassionate, and direct with my words. 
um, because I, I think there has to be that that directness and, and not to not be muddy. And I know this is more of like some people that are listening might think, well, this doesn't sound very spiritual. It is spiritual because the Bible talks about how we say something is very, very important to be wise as a serpent and as gentle as a dove. God calls us to right, use wisdom right. when approaching people. And I think it's so important because there is such a call to our Christian lives. Our, our lives mm-hmm. are to minister to people. Our lives are right. not to minister to people in church. It doesn't have to be at a pulpit, not at a conference not in a, in a building, God, right, we're called right. to minister to people through our lifestyle. And so what you're saying, Kylie, is very important to people that they understand that this is a nuts and bolts, like, hey, how you speak to people, how you, because they might be going through mm-hmm. something today and you talked about ideas and this this goes more into church leadership uh, and not necessarily everyday right. life, but by there, um, you're a leader. So you're over people, you're a worship leader. Um, um, I got to hear your guys' church. I love I love getting out there and worshiping with you guys, just being there and yeah, it was an awesome yeah. Easter Sunday, by the way. Um, yeah, but you're a leader, so all these people are bringing ideas. <laughs> it was a blast, mm-hmm. but everybody has ideas, yeah. and ideas are vulnerable because they're personal. Like when I give an idea to you, it's it's almost like maybe not the best analogy, but it's like your baby. And so when you give an idea yeah. and someone doesn't like it, it hurts really bad, right? Um, and you don't you kind of express that, that about somebody. yourself, exactly. Exactly. And it's just like, hey, great idea, like you're saying, hey, great idea. Here are my only concerns with that. And uh, I've heard a few church leaders like Craig Grishel. Um, pastor mm-hmm. in Oklahoma, which you are, you know, you're familiar with. He, he, and right. several other leaders, they always ask questions. They said, if you don't know what to say, ask questions. You know, if you've got yeah, a person yeah. in your leadership or in your life that doesn't know, like you know, they're doing something wrong, and you know what the answer is, they say, don't give them the answer. He says, ask questions to lead them to the answer. Uh, and yeah. So you're dropping some I, wisdom over here, Kylie. Yeah, I um, like. I'm still young, right? So I'm, I'm, I know I've said this over and over, I'm learning, but um, when I go and talk to my leaders and um, things like that, I, I notice with them, like when I'm talking with them, they'll ask me questions, like as they're helping me process or um, if there's something, you know, we need to talk about or whatever they, they, that's the tactic that they use, you know, a lot of the time is, let's let me ask you some questions first like let's really work this out and see where you're at so I I I, like I've I've even used that myself just because um I've learned from them you know so uh seeing how they they get me get my mind like even because you know you go in a lot of the time with this idea and then when people start asking your question asking you questions you're like hmm wait a minute you know (laughs) so um I I try to do that same kind of thing you know let's Let's ask before I critique and uh, before I challenge good. you and stuff like that. So, I yeah. like that. I like that. Um, yeah. Kylie, why don't you take a, a minute or two and share, just share your testimony. Cause like I said, I, I would love to just hear what God's been showing you in this season, but take a second and share your testimony. Yeah. So um, like I said earlier, I'm a PK, a pastor's kid. So I grew up in church. Um, my parents have actually been at the church they're at for over 30 years. So all of my life. Um, grew up, you know, very involved. And um, when I hit the age about, you know, I was at church camp all the time, you know, where you go and you get saved every summer. <laughs> so um, every service, Pentecostal kind of thing. Um, but when I was uh, 14, I kind of started wrestling, you know, with the whole separating my relationship with God based off of my parents' relationship with God. Um, so I think a lot of the time church kids can kind of get caught dependent on what their parents have rather than what they truly have themselves. So when I was 14, that kind of was something I started wrestling with. And then I truly, this is when I would say I gave my life to Christ. Um, I was at an Eddie James event. Do you remember Eddie James? Yes, I remember. (laughs) No more shackles, no more shackles. Yeah, yeah. So, um, there you know I I got I committed my life to Christ and honestly from that point on looking back it's it's mind-blowing um the things that God has done the things he's led me to um I didn't get it right from that point on I still messed up and had mistakes and things like that but I graduated high school um I had a heart for missions I still do I love missions work and so I began going um I went on my first mission trip when I was 14 and basically went on one about every year after that. So um, started missions work and ended up getting a travel 
uh, out to the Philippines a few different times. And I lived in Jamaica for a few months doing mission work and stuff like that. And that's where, you know, I've, I always sang, singing what is like part of my family. Um, but that was where I discovered my heart for um, speaking and preaching and, you know, teaching the word to people. Uh, so I had the opportunity there to preach and teach and fell and like just found this whole new, it tears my nerves up literally like still to this day. It tears my nerves up every time I get ready to speak or do anything like that. But I knew that God was uh, pushing me towards that direction that he had called me to speak and teach and uh, lead people in a different way than what I thought I was going to. I always thought just the worship leader side of me was the part of ministry that I would be involved in. Um, so I uh, I started that and I felt the Lord call me back to school and that's where I'm at now. Uh, when I was 24, I started back and I just really felt like for me to, for me to uh, become the teacher and speaker and preacher that I needed to be that, you know, education was important for me. Um, learning how to study the Bible, learning how to uh, bring the New Testament and the Old Testament and just those things that they teach mm -hmm. you, you know, um, and where I go, I couldn't ask for better, better, better people um, to teach me those kind of things. So that's where I'm at kind of now. That's my story, I guess you could say, just a brief version yeah. of um, what God has done in my life. And I just, again, I, I look back and I think, how did I get here? You know, like I didn't expect to be in ministry. I kind of always had the feeling that I would, but I didn't necessarily, honestly, I didn't think oh I want to be in ministry one day <laughs> um so so just seeing God just lead me from place to place and um looking back and seeing how he's spoken to me and things like that those are the sweet things that I remember um about those different decision making places you know whether I was going to live in Jamaica if I was going to travel to the Philippines and stay for a few weeks there and stuff like that just depending on God so really like one of the biggest things or consistent things that I see is just me being that God's trying to teach me is like trust me to speak to you um mm -hmm. kind of thing so each and every step of the way you know I'm in a even today I'm I was praying this morning and I was like I have to be confident in the fact of knowing what Jesus is telling me um confident in the fact that he is in me and he will help me make these decisions so uh, that's kind of like my my story where I'm at and what I'm doing right now. <laughs> wow, I absolutely love what that last quote you said. I wrote that down. Each and every step of the way, I have to be confident that Jesus is in me and He will help me make these decisions. Um, and you can chime in on this, Kylie. I'll get the ball rolling, but I feel like this might be something you could probably speak into. Um, every yeah. Christian struggles with this. And also this comes from a little bit of bad theology in the church, but we struggle mm -hmm. with, uh, I just got, I was just talking to Casey Doss the other day and I asked him this question, um, but we struggle with the thought of when we make big decisions, you're always supposed to pray to God. The Bible says to acknowledge God in all of your ways. Yeah. Um, but we get hung up on the fact that we need to work. I need to work. I need to work. I need a word. And Casey Doss, and, and like I said, that is good. You, believe God for a word totally, especially with big decisions, right. you know, you're going to get married, whatever. But he says, he said, uh, Casey was saying, I've seen 18 year olds go from 18 to 23, waste five years of life because they're, they're believing God for a word to go to college. Mm -hmm. And he said, after five years ago, I should go to college anyways. That's a good education. That's not against God's word. And he's like, he said, Casey Doss said, this is what he said. He said, my state of posture is always a green light. He says, if God didn't mm -hmm. tell you no, go <laughs> right right yes so go this ahead is, and speak into that a little bit listen this is something that I feel like has been a part of a lot of my conversations lately and something that I I can I can talk about for a while <laughs> you might have to stop me I, I think we over spiritualize it a lot um and that might be wrong of me to say but I, like nope. you said I don't I don't think that we have to have shooting stars and fireworks go off every time we make a decision. The Bible says that God gives us the desires of our heart. And so mm -hmm. I think a lot of the time we think, um, well, my desire is I want a new car. So God's going to give me that. No, that's not what that scripture means. <laughs> it means that when I am placing myself in posture and I'm spending time with the Lord, that he's going to work in my heart and he's going to give me desires. He's going to give me things in my heart that are his desires, not just my desires. He's going to place his desires in my heart. And 
when we when we place ourselves there, I don't think that I have to sit and pray for 40 hours about every single decision that I make. Again, I have to be confident that the Holy Spirit is in me. He's going to help me make Come decisions on. day to day, moment to moment, minute to minute, you know? So I, I think it went, one of my biggest, this is a pet peeve, so stop me. But when you, like Jesus was a servant, right? So I don't think that really we have to pray about serving. Nope. Like we should, we should, as Christians, we should serve people everywhere we go. So it, it's really kind of hysterical to me when you say, hey, why don't you come, why don't you uh, get plugged in here? Like, let's just find you a place. Let's get you serving, you know, things like that. And they're like, let me pray about it. Mm-mm. And I'm like, what do you got to pray about? You know, let's, <laughs> let's, just, let's just get you, let, if this isn't the right place, totally okay. We'll find you somewhere else or whatever. But I just, like, it's, I think it's so important to serve. And Jesus was a servant. Like, what did he do? Like, he washed the disciples' feet, you know, like, right before everything he went crazy. You know, his whole life was serving people. And so I think that mm. obviously we're supposed to mirror that. So it's just funny to me when people, and it's like you said, really um, church things, you know, that we've kind of messed up and taught wrong, you know, let me... What, let me pray about it. Let me pray about this. Let me pray about that. There's mm. some, I don't, I don't think you really have to pray about every little decision like that. If, if you're spending time and have a relationship with the Lord. Um, I love but, what you just said right there. I don't know. You could say so much more, but I just wanted to cut right there. Cause that was like the really yeah. fatty portion of what you said is like, if you're spending time with God and you are devoting yourself daily at his feet, you should be mm-hmm. being led by the Holy Spirit and you won't have to stop. Hold on, guys. Before I get in the car, I'm going to pray about whether I should go to the gas station. Huh? <laughs> I have but, no gas, but let me pray about it. <laughs> yeah, I have no gas. But let me let me let me pray about that. And God's probably up there like, I don't even know what they're doing anymore. Like, I, <laughs> um, but I love it because and, and I, I'm like I said, I'm being I'm being transparent here. Even now, I'll catch myself still struggling with this because, like I said, it is so bad theology that the church had raised us that you got to wait for a word. You got to wait for a word. You got to wait for a sign. And it's like, um, no, I don't. Um, yeah. there are moments like you, ha- like we had talked about, yes, there are both, especially like when you're going to enter into marriage, you know, you and that mm-hmm. other person should pray about that together, you know, that, that right, phase right. of things. But for the most part, for most of your decisions, just run. I love what Casey said. If God didn't say no, go Casey said with his wife, um, he said, God, he said, I married my wife, not because God said, yes, he didn't tell me no. And he said, I've heard God tell me no about relationships. And he says that he said the definition of truly being outside of God's will is when he does say no and you do, Mm -hmm. and you do the opposite of his word. And I love what you're saying. We get to, and I, listen, I don't care. You can mess with people's business. I, I am all for (laughs) people get too hyper spiritual about things. God was both practical and spiritual. God talked about stewardship and he talked about Mm -hmm. casting out demons, both a practical and spiritual thing. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. You can finish your thought. I just thought that was really powerful. No, you're good. I mean, I, I love what you just said, practical and spiritual. We can't so over-spiritualize things that we forget the practical. Like you said, I, I just mm. think that's so important. And I, I think a big part of that too, you know, for those of us who are, you know, I guess you could say we're, we're more spiritually mature than others. Yeah. Um, and it's our job as leaders to pull those along and disciple you know, that's huge. I think, I feel like everywhere I've listened to lately, discipleship is like what everybody's talking about. I don't know if that's just me or what, but like as leaders, you know, we should, we should be able to go and those people that are new to Christ or, you know, new to figuring out how this whole relationship thing works, we should be there to help them, you know, like, Look, That's it's really okay. Powerful. It's it's okay that you're not sure, but let me hold your hand and let me walk with you. And discipleship is not just like um, let me well, let me check in with you once a week, or um, I, I'm going to let you in in my life, but not all the way in my life. Discipleship is literally living day to day, letting people see, you know, letting letting them see how you walk through things, letting them see how you make decisions. You know, like that's huge for new believers is being able to watch believers that are on down the road you know depend on the holy spirit to lead them and guide them so um i think it's all development and i don't know discipleship i just think you know if we don't get that right we're missing it completely so i think that's a challenge you know to leaders and to the church especially in this day and time you know our generation (laughs) 
um, they need people. They they need leaders and that's I was sharing about Elijah and Elisha earlier. That whole story, like I need those people ahead of me to be able to do what I'm going I'm supposed to do. I need them to pull me pull me along. I need them to, wow. you know, plow the grounds ahead of me. I need them to be there for me to talk to. Um I need to be able to see like see their life, you know, like this is how they handled this. You know, yeah. lead me in that right direction. But I also have a responsibility for those coming behind me, you know. So I think Come that's on. something that we've missed. Um, honestly, as the church, I feel like we've done a poor job of that. But I believe now more than ever that we better we better start getting it right. You know, you better we better yeah. change our perspective on that and be disciples to and disciple mm-hmm. people, you know. So Amen. I, I love what you said about discipleship. And I have noticed a pattern there. Uh, and I think sometimes we notice patterns. I think it's like specific, like God's trying to speak something to us. And, you know, mm-hmm. most recently God's been showing me just about being at his feet and putting him first and trusting him. And um, right. uh, I heard a friend of mine say once that there's no word, uh, there's no word in the Hebrew language for the word coincidence, because I was like, I was like, this is happening in my life. And that's like, they're all like the same. And she goes, there's no coincidence with God. Like if that's happening, God's trying to show you something. And so I love yeah. you talking about discipleship. Um, discipleship is, is such, it is a relationship. Uh, I would, Jacob, mm-hmm. Jacob Peterson, uh, Pastor Jacob, he's from the ramp. He was sharing with me. He's like, it's a relationship. He says, a di- right. he said, it's actually supposed to be the, um, uh, the disciple is supposed to be uh, is pursuing the discipler every every much as the other way around and um, right. I love what you were saying just about the accountability he was talking about how he has some people he keeps accountable um, mm-hmm. and he says I don't want to know what I don't want to get a text from you about after your sin he goes I want you to call me every week saying, Hey, I've been doing good, but you know, I was on Instagram and I saw this picture pop up and I just kind of indulged myself. Uh, a, fr- mm-hmm. a friend of ours, pastor, a puberty in Brazil, phenomenal man. He, he struggled with lust for years and God delivered of yeah. it. He, was, he, he is like, he is honest to like, Hey, you probably shouldn't say that to a thing, but he's very <laughs> vulnerable. And he's very vulnerable yeah. in the pulpit. And he just, he said, he goes, I'm delivered of that sin, but I still have to resist it. And he says, I says, I'm so accountable to my mentor. He says, one time I was on a plane and I was looking in an in-flight magazine because I was bored and uh, yeah. he said, a picture popped up and he says, it wasn't completely inappropriate, but it was like a, one of those suave soap pictures and the, the female in there was not dressed appropriately. And he says, it was just enough. And he says, I indulged in it for one second longer than, than yeah. I needed to. And he says, I quickly ran to my mentor and just got vulnerable. And that's what yeah. discipleship is getting vulnerable and not just about temptation. We always harp on lust right. because it is a big thing. But harp about decisions like, you know, hey, how is your how's your workout life? I noticed you're waking up yeah. at 10 o'clock in the morning and you're not really doing anything. You're not going to school. You're not working in ministry. Yeah. Can, we, can we fix that? Yeah. Really well, it, you know, it, it says uh, Elijah went and found Elisha. But then right after that, it says Elisha ran after him. So it's so awesome. sad, you know, like I think it's our responsibility as leaders to go and find them and offer that opportunity but it's also on us on elisha on the elishas to respond to that opportunity so it's a it's a two-way street That's but i don't think it's either or it but it's so yeah yes it is it is a relationship um and so what is something god recently has been showing you and teaching you in life um really i think we kind of talked hit on this a little bit but uh just this morning i was praying into it again um just being confident in that I am able wow. because of he lives in me um I think a lot of the time it's easy for me to um question like Callie are you doing this out of yourself or is this something that God is showing you and I think I that can come from like comparison of other people's lives um, maybe I'm not doing it right because my life don't look like theirs or I'm I'm this age and I don't have the things that they have so what did I do wrong you know and I think that's um, that's kind of a messed up version or that shows too like I have some wrong views of like who God is actually you know I, he's not here to discipline he's oh, not yeah. he, he's not here to you know crack the whip for whatever when I'm when I don't when I mess up and don't make the right decision He's a loving, gentle, sweet, he will bring correction, but he, he's compassionate and he wants what's best for me. You know, he's not out to get me. I think that's been preached a lot. I can say in in the Pentecostal church, I think, um, I feel like we've done a better job of that, but 
you know, like <laughs> he he's not out just around the corner waiting on Kylie to mess up so that he can, you know, no, 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 you did that wrong. And um, so I, I really awesome. believe that God is trying to just reveal that to me more and more and more. Um, and I, to be completely honest, like I feel like I, for the past few years, like I, I just see it a little bit more, you know, something that I've had to overcome personally and that's me being <laughs> super vulnerable, but um, like I, I see development and I see growth and then it's like, wait, God, he's like, wait, I want to fix this part too. You have a miss, <laughs> you, you have a bad beat right here too. So uh, let's fix that while we're at it. But um, just, you know, that's kind of where I'm at, you know, just letting God reveal to me more and more of who he is. And I don't think that'll ever stop either. Um, I hope it don't. Oh, that's so powerful. <laughs> I, I got to write yeah. that down. So give me one second. Oh, um, you're good. I hate dead air on the, on the podcast, but I'm like, I'm writing that. So good. God is wanting to reveal, God wants to reveal more and more of him to, to us each and every day. And, um, you know, I, I've seen several different posts recently about understanding our identity and understanding our identity is crucial to operating as a Christian. And when you understand your identity, you understand what's available to you, the power that's inside of you, your yeah. inheritance. I and mean, we could preach on that forever. But I think before we understand our identity, we have to understand who God is first, before we understand right. who we are, we got to pursue God. Um, because the Bible says that in the beginning, in Genesis chapter, uh, in, in Genesis, excuse me, that man was made in God's image, that mm -hmm. we were made after God's image. We were made in his likeness, right. that God wants us to be like him, to, to, uh, to help people, to serve them, to bless them, to love them, to bring about healing. And I mm -hmm. think when we pursue God, in our pursuit of God, we understand more and more of who we are as individuals and who we are as children yeah. of God. Right, and I love right. that. I said that, that. Go ahead. I, w I was actually talking with a friend just yesterday and I was kind of like venting and getting some stuff out. And she said, Kelly, would you ever tell somebody else that, like, would you look at somebody else and tell them God's out to get them? And I was like, no. And she said, well, you're basically saying that to yourself. So if you don't believe it for other wow. people, why are you putting that on you? And I was like, you're right <laughs> like you know like it was just a moment for me you know she's like you can't you know that's not true so don't allow oh I think my gosh. for me like my mind you know that's where the enemy tries to come and get us a lot of the time and if we let him he can run our thoughts and things like that just it's like the if one thought is planted if we let that thing go we can end up you know who knows where just in our minds just our thinking you know, my dad calls Come it stinking thinking. <laughs> that's what he always says. We're not going to have any of that stinking thinking. But that's something I have to be in control of is my mind and um, making sure that my thoughts are on Jesus, you know, and what he wants and that's how so he good. is. And yeah, so that's that something is that so I good. deal with and kind of. I love through. what your friend said. That was like, that was like a slap in the face for me, though. I was like, oh my gosh. It was like, would you say that to somebody else? No, I wouldn't say yeah. that. That's like against the Bible. Why'd you say it about yourself? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I literally, we were walking, we were like walking downtown and she <laughs> said that. And I was like, well, <laughs> like, no, you're right. I wouldn't. <laughs> but, <laughs> my, my accountability partner and my brother, he's the same way. He'll like call me on the carpet. I'm like, who do you think you are? Like, don't, yeah. don't, don't do that. I, I, I'm a Christian, yeah. I'm a, and I, but, it, but it, it's so powerful to just like you had said, God is revealing. Um, I like how you said views in your life. Um, they could be called filters, whatever you want to call them. Things like ah, yeah. that's not correct. And God has so been dealing with me on that lately. Just and and we're probably going to go down a different road here, but I love this. I've been talking to my friends, just having conversations about being led by the Holy Spirit. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up in church, we always think when God speaks to us, it's like this um, Morgan Freeman, go here, turn, and we're like, okay, God, huh? and we're always looking for that voice. And because we're yeah. looking for that voice, we miss it, which we're not. Gonna, that's not what I want to talk about, but. God, God leads us in so many different ways. And I was just sharing, like God leads us in a still small voice. Sometimes I was telling this one person, I was like, God leads us in the most unique ways. Like sometimes I'll just have a thought pop in my head and I'm like, that's kind of random. Like yeah. the other day I was, I had some, I was talking to somebody and I had this thought pop in my head, like, Hey, you need to be in it. This is what it was. And, um, just not revealing that person's name, but I was like, God was yeah. just the thought popped in my head. Hey, you need to believe in God for this because God can do it for you. And this person had been believing this thing for a long time. And, 
And it, it, it was a thought though. It wasn't like, I thought it was me. And I was like, well, I'm going to say it anyway. It's going to be, be obedient. And I said, Hey, God told me to tell you, you need to be believing God for this. And I'm acting like they're sitting next to me. You need to be believing God for this because he can do it. So seeds, whatever right. it is. And that person told me, she goes, uh, she goes, that was literally the word I needed just now. And she had gotten a text right when I was giving her that word. Somebody gave her a word just like that because this person been believing God for something big in their life. And, uh, but God doesn't, and like you said, when God's like, when God's correcting us, God's been correcting me in some areas and I don't mind being transparent, um, just right. being more organized with my life, um, mm-hmm. being more intentional, meditating on his word is a big one for me because we were talking about changing your mind, change your life. Um, I feel mm-hmm. like that's a quote somewhere. It probably is, but, but God's <laughs> been teaching me, God's been kind of really like, you need to be meditating daily and meditation, uh, is not just thinking about the scripture. It's actually, uh, I guess it's mumbling under your breath. So I can do all right. things through me i can do all things yeah. to Christ. that's meditation um mm-hmm. so I, i'm sorry i wanted to go there but i love talking about being nice. led by the holy spirit because sometimes it's just like sometimes you just have a thought pop in your head and like that's weird but i'm gonna follow yeah. it and you do and somebody's like oh my gosh you have no idea that's the word i needed yeah yeah a reoccurring theme i say that we're on here is like we we don't have to ever complicate it it's it's simple <laughs> he's he's not he's not gonna cause you he's not a god of confusion you know so Amen. i we were talking, I was talking to that same friend and uh, I was sharing with her an, an experience I had with God a few weeks ago, actually at the living room with Pastor Stephen and Lori. Um, we were kind of like in a moment of prayer and it, the service had went a, went a little long. And so the kids came in and joined us and, you know, it's kind of like quiet, the keyboards just playing, people were praying. And um, beside me was a family and the little boy, he was probably like two. And I mean, like he was having the time of his life, like he was just running around and playing and he was busy, like he and his sister, they were busy. They had toys, you know, they were, they weren't being a distraction at all. They were being children, you know, so it was great. I was enjoying watching them and um, I had been there praying and I watched this, God told me, he, he was like, watch this little boy. And so I was watching him and as he jumped around and played and then his dad came over to him and he kneeled down in front of him. And he looked at him, he said, son, come here, I want to pray for you. And in that moment, the, this two-year-old little boy stopped everything he was doing. And he literally just like closed his eyes and put his hands up like this. Uh-huh. And his dad started praying for him. And I felt that voice, you know, tell me then. And it wasn't this loud, audible, like screaming, holier than thou, Morgan Freeman voice. It was just this quiet, still, internal voice that I knew God was saying to me Kylie just received from me like he received from his father like I'm your heavenly wow. father so if you'll just allow yourself to receive from me like he's doing and like from that two-year two-year-old little boy just to, just what he's he's having the time of his life but then when his dad said hey come here I want to pray for you he stopped everything he was doing and so I just she asked me when we were talking about it she's like was it a loud voice you know like what was it and I was like no it was just this like I knew it was God talking to me. And again, just the simplicity of it. And it was awesome. But (laughs) yeah. That and that and that comes from like you said earlier, talking about when you're intimate with God daily, you know his voice. Um, and of course, yeah. I, I, I'm a single guy, so I can't speak about relationships. But I just from yeah. observation, and I know that when you get to know a person in a relationship, and even with even with kids, you get to know their cries, their screams. You get to know mm-hmm. the little subtle hints, like you just know them. And I think that's the way with our God, with relationship with God, is the more we get to know Him. We just right. know when he's speaking to us, like when he, like sometimes I, it's hard to explain, but I think, you know what I'm talking about. I, and I do want to explain it for the, for the listeners is sometimes, like we said, it's just a thought like God, like you had just said, sometimes you just feel God leading you, like just leading you somewhere and mm-hmm. you don't know where it's going. And I love what you said. God he said, don't overcomplicate it. He's not a God of confusion. I think that's why God only gives us one step at a time, because yeah. if we get more than one, I, and I speak for myself here, I am notorious for overcomplicating things. My brother, um, he's a huge voice in my life. He is always, he's like, bro, keep it simple, stupid. And I'm emphasizing <laughs> stupid in your place here. And I'm just kidding. He's not that mean, but he really is very blunt. He's like, bro, stop it. And I need the, I always need the reminders. Stop. That's, I think that's truly why God God is like, Hey, um, he's trusting you with that portion. He's yeah. like, Hey, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to Kylie, I'm going to give you this word. I want you to watch him in the service. Right. 
And I, I love that spoke volumes to me. I'm, I'm like trying to write it down in such a way it could become a coat, like just receive from God, like a child receives from a father. Just, yeah. um, and I love the, I love what you're saying. He's busy. He's running around. He's doing all these things. But when his dad said, stop, he stopped. And he's like, I want to pray stopped. for you. And yeah. I, and I think and I that's think how that's we should something, re- Yeah. That's something we don't do well. Right. Like our whole yeah. world is, you know, if you take a Sabbath, people look at you and they're like, you're being lazy. <laughs> you know like if you're not doing something all the time it's like what are you doing with your life and that's not what God said to do either you know the Sabbath is just as important and then I don't does it have to be on a Sunday no like you know pick no. your day whatever those kind of things but I do believe that it is, it is definitely not a Sunday for you is it Kylie no <laughs> no not a Sunday for me but you know I just we get so busy with life and we can get caught up and all the different things that we've got to do and got to get done. But it's so important that we stop and just listen and receive. Oh, so. That's so powerful. Um, I know with my personality, I'm one of those guys, I love to be working. I love to be doing things. And though this is something in my personality, because we all have personality types, I'm sure. I don't know if you're an Instagram <laughs> person. Um, I am. I'm not like crazy, but I know what I am and I read on it a little bit. <laughs> I know a little bit about my personality type and my personality type is achiever. I like to get things done, but I also dab a little bit in, into people pleasing. And though, like I said, this is an area that God has really helped me to re- re- rein in. Um, yeah. Because it, it was a <clears throat> point I was telling people, and I hope this blesses someone that we, we all have a natural tendency to want to please people, though. Like I said, for people like me, it's a little stronger. Um, right. And so I years ago where I was like, I was compromising my values, my morals. I was compromising Mm -hmm. my time because I just wanted to make people happy. I would do, I was addicted to making people just love me and like me. And I realized Mm -hmm. number one, I was compromising my, forget, not just compromising scripture, but I was compromising my own dreams. I was giving up my own dreams to make sure somebody else was happy with me. And I, I saw this quote, heard it on my, my Facebook. It said, not everybody's going to like you and you just need to be okay with that. And, (laughs) um, and what I was going to say was, is in this season of life, um, God sometimes calls us to go underground. And by go underground, I mean, sometimes God just calls us to take a step back, just like a bow and arrow. Mm-hmm. God sometimes has to pull us back before he can launch us forward. Um, and in the music, Kylie, you're familiar with this in the music, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter how many songs you release. It's that one big hit. And so I'm in the music industry. And so I'm really believing God. I want my music to bless and reach people. Um, right. But instead of releasing a bunch of songs, I am just like taking a step back and I'm just writing and pouring in and I'm instead of paying money to just produce a bunch of songs, I'm investing my money to write more songs. And anyways, it hurts sometimes because I see some of my friends who are releasing these songs and these music videos. And it's like, Oh, I want to be doing that. But I have to remind myself, I'm like, Hey, God's got me in a season where I'm just being drawn back and pouring in. Uh, And I don't know why God on this, but like I said, we're just following the river here. And I think just sometimes we need to understand in those seasons where it looks like we're doing nothing. And people may say, you're being lazy. Why haven't I seen you post about, you know, this or this in a long time? It's like, because God is doing something in me right now. God is, right. God is showing me something. He's taking me deeper because he wants to take me farther. Right. Right. I think, I think it's huge. I think, you know, a lot of the time it's referred to as the wilderness and I've been known to make in the church world, you know, we refer to that as yeah. the wilder, wilderness sometimes, but, um, I've been known to say before, I hate the wilderness. Like, get me out of here. (laughs) But at the same time, you know, there's so much that you can draw from. And, you know, it really propels you into that next Mm -hmm. season and that next place. And God's always trying to, he's trying to teach us something and show us something and love on us. And, you know, you got to let him do those things. That's so powerful. That's so yeah. powerful. And I, and I think that comes from recognizing the season that you're in, understanding where you're at mm-hmm. and there's finding contentment in that. And you said one yeah. thing. And so we're going to start wrapping this up, Kylie, because I know you, you're such a busy person. Uh, but you said <laughs> one thing earlier that is truly that truly really spoke to me today is just being confident that the Holy Spirit is in me. And then I, when I make my decisions that he will lead me and he'll guide me and that the Holy Spirit is in me, that I've got the power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in me. And I thought that just, that was like the best thing. We could have just shut the podcast down right there. So I love that you said that. Um, so I got a few questions as we're closing down. What is the best advice okay. you've been given? Um, recently, honestly, the one that I've been on lately is don't overcomplicate it. I know that's what we just talked about, but I'm an overthinker. Uh, I think on things hard and I can create situations that haven't even happened in my mind so create uh, these scenarios he said what oh no he yeah. didn't we're gonna go. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what i would say if 
if I said that yeah. or da, 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 you you're like you're like you're like you're like spinning three you're like in the bathroom doing everything this is what I'm gonna say to him I swear <laughs> if he does this and it goes that direction I'm gonna juke left and we're yeah. I've done that before <laughs> yeah so that's like the advice that I've been given just recently I might have something I've heard a lot but recently where I'm at and in life that I'm like really holding on to right now don't ever complicate it don't ever complicate it that's powerful what's your favorite quote um your one of my favorites is your vertical relationship should have a heart will have a horizontal effect Ooh, ooh, who did that yeah, quote? that's I, really good i love that. actually i heard joel houston say that um I've, that's been like years ago that i heard him say that but it's that's just like one that i always keep in mind you know like whatever i'm doing vertically whatever's going on here will control what happens here so no, that's that. right. That's right. The the fruits of the spirit, people don't understand the fruit of the spirit is a fruit. It is a product of something. Mm-hmm. And that's the same way your pro, your love of Jesus, your intimacy with God should have fruit in it. Uh, we're, yeah. we're, we'll be on that all day. But <laughs> that was <laughs> really good. Again. I was like, dang, I'm gonna put that on my piece <laughs> of advice you'd give your younger self. Um, my younger self. Have fun. Like you don't have to grow up so fast like you know like I think I know our culture I'm here in the south and um you know for a a female you know when I was 15 I thought I would graduate high school I would go to college I would fall in love in college and then after my senior year I would get engaged and then after college we would get married and have children and you know do the typical kind of thing and it didn't happen that way and you know you start over you start overthinking it and you're like I've got to do this to get to this point or I'm like, no it, it, it's not that simple just like focus on Jesus let him love on you spend time with him and you know enjoy it like enjoy it while you're there I love that that that's really powerful um last question for you this is a fun one Kylie um you and I just connected on social media so I'm not sure if you've seen it yet but each and every week I do something called would you rather Wednesday I was a youth Uh pastor for a long time I worked in youth ministry for a long time and we would play games like this all the time and I started doing on my Instagram and everybody's like you need to do this every week so I do it every week and so every podcast I close with this is my last question so here we go so would you rather would you rather and would you rather embarrass yourself in front of your crush or laugh out loud when somebody cries? <laughs> this is awful. I think I would rather <laughs> laugh out loud. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is awful. I, I might sometimes, when I start laughing, I can't stop. And it's normally in the worst situations, like the times that you're not supposed to laugh, I'm laughing. But <laughs> that's I awful. hate that. I hate that. So if somebody comes up to me and they're like, they're kind of tearing up and you're like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I did that one time. I used to go to the schools when I worked in youth ministry and um we would go to the schools every every week, once a week during lunchtime, we would just pass out flyers and just talk and hang out with the yeah. kids. And and um I was coming in one day and this one young lady, she always came up to our table. She never came to our church, but she always enjoyed hanging out at our table. <laughs> she was yeah. crying. And I just like started smiling and I beelined it to the office because we had to check in and I beelined it to my table. As she comes up to me and she's a brazen thing. She came up to me, she goes, You saw me crying, why didn't you say anything? And I just lost it. I lost it. And she laughed too. And she's like, You didn't say anything. Oh you just gosh. totally left me hanging. <laughs> the worst time. Oh, it was a no, it's embarrassing. But Kylie, thank you for being my guest. Do you want to take a second and promote anything? I don't know if you've got a music or a podcast or anything. Do you want to take a second and just talk real quick? I don't really have anything like that. You know, um, just I would encourage people to let God love on you. Let him be who he wants to be in your life. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Kylie, thank you for your time. For those of you listening, I'm going to put uh, a way for you guys to connect with Kylie um, in the in description and on my website. So thank you again, Kylie. You have a wonderful day. Thank you, Blake. You too.